Want to find out more about your favorite station, what's on in the Dover area, about your favorite programs? Then visit the DCR website for all the latest information at dovercommunityradio.co.uk. Hello, I do believe the first foot guards. All right. So, uh, <coughs> would you mind having a quick um, conversation with me no, about what all. you're doing? The rest of them are all gone down the bottom there, but... We're a bit too old and wise no. to uh, you no, climb, this, go this down, you've got to come back up You're again, the ones with you? brains. That's right, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. first foot guards. So is that regulars, then? That regular troopers? What do you mean, what? I don't know, regulars is the modern term for a, for a No, they're grandier mm-hmm. guards soldiers, now, yeah. grandiers. Well, they still refer to them as the first uh, foot guards, but uh, in those days there were only three, the first, second and third which are now the Grenadiers, the Coldstreams and the Scots um, guards. We were formed in 1656. The Coldstreams are about four years older because they were Cromwellian troops. We were Royalist troops. And um, the Coldstreams formed about 1650, I think, and the Scots probably around about 1690 or something. And on the restoration of the monarchy with Charles II, all royalist troops took precedence over Cromwellian troops. Mm-hmm. Consequently, uh, we are the senior regiment of the foot guards over the Coldstreams, who actually are four years older. And the same with the lifeguards and the horse guards. The lifeguards were royalist cavalry, and the royal horse guards, or the blues and roars as they are now, they were Cromwellian cavalry. Uh, some were sometimes known as the People's Cavalry <laughs> and uh, they obviously took, uh, the lifeguards took precedence over them uh, basically, uh, yeah, we, the, well, the Grenadier Guards as they are now they wear bear skins uh, in commemoration of beating the French Imperial Guard at Waterloo although bear skins were worn by Grenadier companies of all regiments in the British Army anyway a certain type of, not quite the same as they wear now, but with a plate on the front. We actually have them when we're in full kit with white gaiters up to here. I don't wear it because I'm in what they call centre company. I'm a quartermaster, so oh, wow. I'm, uh, I'm in headquarters company. But uh, he's in um, Grenadier company, has a complete white plume. And if you look nowadays, you'll see the Grenadier guards, they have a white plume on the side of their bear skin. The Coldstreams have a red plume. The Scots have no plume at all. The Welsh Guards, uh, the Irish Guards have a green and something or other colour one, and the uh, Welsh Guards have a sort of a, 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 well, another sort of colour. But the, the Irish Guards and the Welsh Guards are, they're the babies. The Irish Guards were formed in 1900, Queen Victoria, uh, in thanks for their efforts in the Boer War, and the uh, Welsh Guards were formed in 1915 during the First World War. So technically, the Irish Guards and the um, Welsh Guards never ever wore this uniform in battle. You know, so uh, they're just newcomers, really. But, you did uh, see action in our second engagement, World War Two. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All uh, yeah, all Guards regiments saw action. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do yeah. you manage to ta- to to take the enemy down by by a good sticking? Usually, yes. I mean, we did at Waterloo, and we've done it ever since, really. Oh, yes, yes. So, what part did you play in Waterloo? We were the, uh, there were two uh, brigades, guards brigade. The guards brigades at Waterloo were the only two brigades that were completely British, because Wellington, all the other brigades that he had, what he did, he got a British regiment, line regiment, and he uh, brigaded them with a foreign regiment, like uh, Dutch or, or Belgian so that they would steady them because some of them were a bit suspect and started to run a bit when they saw the French coming but the two guards brigades that's the the two uh, battalions of uh, the third battalion and the second battalion of the first foot guards that's us and the second uh, battalion of the cold streams and the second battalion of the scots guards uh, they formed the two brigades of uh, of, of guardsmen and the, the light companies of the, of the Guards Brigades actually defended the Chateau of Hougoumont against 10,000 French uh, troops and held it off all day and never got taken. 
and the rest of us actually were um, brigaded on the main battlefield and uh, at the end of the day um, we all laid down in the corn and when the French guard imperial came up to the old guard yeah. came up towards the British lines we actually just leapt up out of the grass and uh, uh, the corn and fired at them point, point blank and absolutely annihilated them yeah. and that was uh, that was the only time that the uh, Napoleon's old guard had ever been the first time they'd actually really been used in action and the only time that they were actually beaten so um, Yes, that was it. And after that, we adopted their bearskin in uh, not just in Grenadier companies, but in all companies uh, wore the bearskin, which they which they wear. Obviously, they're wearing today. It's trooping the colour this morning, so they're wearing it today. But uh, the only time they actually fought in those bearskins was during the Crimea. The Crimea they wore bearskins, but by the time we got to the end of the 19th century, obviously people were starting to wear battle dress and khaki and pith helmets and things like that. So uh, it's a short period that they actually wore bearskins in battle. Even though we had bearskins on our grenadier companies, we never actually wore them in battle, only for ceremonial. So, there we are. If you're Cromwellian, why have you got the Royalist? We're not Cromwellian, we're Royalists. Royalists? Yes. Oh, Royalists, I yeah, thought yeah. so. No, no, royal yeah, we're Royalists. No, the, the Cromwellian were um, the second foot guards, as they are now, the Coldstreams, and the Blues and Royals, or the Royal Horse Guards. They were Cromwellian troops. No, we were Royalists. We were Charles II's uh, troops. I'm, I'm a royalist Thank myself, you. actually. Oh, I, right. I read all the adventure books when I was young. Oh, uh, right. Yes, aren't we all? That's right. Oh, no, we're royalist. Uh, so, in fact, the badge the badge that we have here is exactly the same badge nowadays for the um, uh, first for the Grenadier Guards, it, except instead of having GR on, which is for George, yeah. obviously, they're ER now, Elizabeth Rex. I've actually got a general service pattern Shaco plate on here. He's actually wearing a uh, starburst. I'm actually uh -huh. waiting for another Shaco, which I'll have one of those on it. That is actually a first foot guard's uh, uh, starburst plate. But the general service plate here was worn by all sorts of regiments in the British Army. And that's GR, George Rex, obviously, King George, yeah. George III. So, so there's, do you have to redo all your, your buttons and badges each time there's a new icon, I mean, new, new mono? Well, we would do, would do, yeah, I mean, we don't, because we're always the same monarch, but, uh, yes, that's what they had to do, um, they had to change, because um, I have, my wife has an uncle who was um, uh, in the 3rd Battalion of the Grenadier Guards, and when he joined, uh, George the Sixth was the king, and his buttons have all got uh, GR the Six on them, obviously, and uh, they do, they have to change everything, all the badges, um, to the, pre the the reigning monarch. So if our, when our queen goes, I suppose it will be. I don't know if Charles is going to be Charles the third or not. Actually, Charles the third. Yeah. Should, well, I don't know. I think the trouble is a bit of a stigma about Charles the first having his head cut off, wasn't there? So they're not sure whether he'll be Charles the third or George the seventh. There, is, there are rumours. Mm, yeah, I don't know how they'll work that one. Certainly, his son will be William V, won't he? Yes. I mean, that won't be in our lifetime, I doubt it, anyway. Although, having said that, who knows, you know. But the Queen carries on, She's, uh, she catches up like with her mother. She'll be here for another 15 years or more, won't she? So, that'll make me pretty ancient by then. Yeah, ancient. So in 15 years I shall be the same age as she is now. <coughs> Good old Queen. Oh yeah. Standing up there for all of us. Yeah, yes, old Elizabeth, yeah. So there we are. Yeah, I, I, you're based in Dover, are you? No, we, well, we drill at Dover Castle, yeah, the first um, su uh, Sunday in the month.